Hey guys, this is Mark from JazzGuitarLessons.net and welcome to this quick vlog uh, in a slightly different setting. Today I didn't really feel like sitting and having a black background, so you see the foam on the wall still in my studio, but I felt like standing. I never shoot standing, so might as well. So here's a short tip. Today this is applied to any or all musicians and even if you're trying to acquire skills in different uh, fields such as I would say martial arts or cooking, uh, here comes general advice. Uh, some of you will w watch this and say too much talking, not, yeah, I'm not playing in this video. So please choose in the dozen or hundreds of videos on this channel or on other channels. Actually I want to shout out to Corey, uh, Corey Taylor, check this out, skilledmusicians.com or skilled musician, right? Now Corey is in, uh, I guess in Georgia, in Atlanta and teaches gospel and uh, jazz piano. Uh, pretty much the same way I do for jazzstarsons.net, but really applied for keyboard. So if you're into uh, piano music, go check him out. And we were chatting um, as, you know, instructors online, and Corey brought the point that it's really easy as beginners to grab onto new topics. And I'll, I told him, yeah, man, this is exa exactly how I, I, I tell my students how we work. So I'll put it in the way Corey put it, and then I'll put it in the way... I put it. So Corey said, you know, you start at piano and then you can grab this topic, it's like scales, right? So you go and practice your scales. Then you grab like chords, you grab two, five, one, big topic, chord progression, right? And then as you get better and better, your tendency to want to grab new topics is still there, but there's not that many topics to cover. And the, the what you should be doing is actually minimizing the number of topics you address, but going higher and, and and uh, going deeper in each topic. So 251 as a beginner is not the same as 251 once you've been playing piano, jazz piano for 5, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, right? So uh, I really uh, enjoy this approach and actually I reflect it in, in my own uh, course materials as the spiral of learning. And by spiral of learning, I really do mean that, uh, well, uh, I'll get to that in a second, uh, but to, just to finish on that, that Corey tangent, it's like, absolutely, if you are doing 251 because you reached out to one topic and then you're like, all right, I'm done with it. I'm going to try and move on to new things. Uh, you always get this sort of master, say like Tori or like a sensei that's going to go, hey, go back to that. People say back to basics, go back to your punches, go back to whatever is essentially what this is all about um, and refine this and become a master of the small things. So that's a quote I saw somewhere as well, which it says, do small things in a great way. So we could have this analogy saying, what about John Coltrane? What about Wes Montgomery? John Coltrane, after 10 minutes or 10 days of playing the saxophone, he was already playing scales. But how about John Coltrane within 10 years of playing the saxophone? Or, you know, at towards the, further towards the end of his life, he was still practicing scales. He never stopped practicing scales. He said that in interviews. So you see that it's going deeper in each topic. So my, my way of putting it, really is a spiral of learning. And when I say spiral, it's exactly how the modules in the mastery program are built. The way I take through students through a spiral. So you're here and the spiral is like, um, say a pie and you split it in, in four topics. Say it's uh, comping, you know, comping in chords and soloing and chord melody and sort of theory, right? And you do this, but next round you're a bit higher. So you actually ascend in your spiral, but when you're here, you're doing comping, but next round, that's comping 101. But next round, you're doing comping, you're on comping 102. But you're still playing on the same topics. You're not learning that much new stuff. You're just going deeper in your 251, in your shell voicings, is removing the bass from your shell voicing, then adding extensions and doing that and applying. So point being, and I said that in uh, in other videos when we, we opened up and launched a course, it's like, well, comping 101, you're going to see this stuff. But in Comping 102, you're not going to see another length of the same amount. You're going to be going over about 80%. So Comping 102 is 80% what you've already seen in Comping 101, but taken to a further degree, so spiral of learning. And the other 20% is new stuff. So 80-20 approximately, right? So that's exactly what's happening when you transition to Comping 103. You're still looking up at 80% of the stuff you already know, but then adding on top of it. So there's not... Um, Takeaway, key takeaways, there's not that much stuff new you will learn that's going to be mind-blowing, that's, oh my god, this is uh, totally different, a different approach, a different concept, so say concept, it's rather going to be 
in the long run concepts you've already been exposed to or you're already familiar or extremely familiar to that you're going to dig deeper and you're going to become an expert you're going to shed so same goes with uh, at a certain point in the past i started to uh, draw with a pencil i'm not really good with visual art so i started to do it i massacred <laughs> I tried to draw uh, Pat Metheny, sorry Pat, and um, it, it's really not beautiful. But then even a month or two in, I'm like, oh, I can see I'm still just putting pen to paper and doing something. It's still that, that's the basic, but then you can refine that and refine it and refine it and refine it. So playing scales, beginner, jazz guitar, playing scales, John Coltrane, still the same scales, still the same notes, no new concept exposed. The analysis of it after the fact is pretty obvious, but Becoming a master has very, very, very simple things is the big takeaway for this vlog. So that's all I had, guys. I hope you're having a good week. Uh, my name is Mark from JazzGuitarLessons.net. Improve your jazz guitar playing with a real teacher. And I hope you've enjoyed this standing uh, blog with my, my uh, how's it? Uh, what's this uh, hardwood? Shine? The shine? Ah, mahogany? No, I forgot. Shine. It's massive wood. I totally forgot. This, this weighs a ton, by the way. If you open it, it's crazy. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed the blog. And also, I looked at my stats, and I know about um, 60 to 80% of you guys watching are not subscribed to the channel. So if you enjoy the video lessons, there's countless playlists with chord melody, with improv, with all sorts of chords topics. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. And uh, turn the little bell on to make sure you're notified when I publish new stuff. And I will see you soon on the website. All right? Take care. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.